Hi, I'm Rob Pats. And I'm Kristen Stanton. And this is The Rob and Kristen Show. Welcome to another edition of the Robin Kristen Show. It is so good to be back with you. Last week, we, of course, did a little different version of the Robin Kristen Show. Uh, Kristen bludgeoned a pumpkin. <laughs> Only because you wouldn't handle a knife. <laughs> and because you picked out a pumpkin that was, it was massive. <laughs> you, you go back, watch it's on in demand, watch it without audio. It's super funny because I watched a little of it. She's doing like this on the top. It looks like poor Dave. Rest in peace, Dave. He names the pumpkin Dave. Who names their pumpkin? Dave. He looked like a Dave. Uh -huh. okay. No offense to any Daves out there. Or Davids or any other form of the, the name. Um, hey, you know what? We're getting into the season now. Holiday season. And you're going to have family coming over. And I came up with this idea. You know what? Thanksgiving is around the corner. It's soon. Soon and yes. very soon. And I think one of the cool things would be if you've got all your grandkids, if you're, if you're out there and your grandma and a grandpa are watching this, get all your grandkids and your children, when they come home for Thanksgiving, new slippers. Because a good it's idea. Because cold. You know, it's going to be cold. It's cold already. But mm -hmm. it's going to even be colder. Get them all slippers. And right now, Mike Lindell and the great folks at MyPillow are running a fantastic special. Uh, use the promo code ATV. Go there. Get slippers for the entire family for Thanksgiving. So like when you're decorating the trees, doing all that kind of neat stuff, you too can have nice warm toesies. I think that's important. Use the promo code ATV when you check out and you help us. And it helps you get a great discount. Another thing that helps you this week, I think, I think this is as important as anything else your, during your week, is five things we think you should know. And, and I've, I've been thinking about this, and I'm super excited about this. I could have been in the Olympics. I totally believe I could have been in the Olympics. And what sport? Flag football. Well, you played football. I played football. But flag football, I could do it. And in 2028, men's and women's flag football comes to the Olympics. Isn't that neat? It's exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun to see. Now, uh, somebody brought up a great point. Are they going to let professional football players play flag football? It's a could, great question. Could very well happen in that case. Then, no, I wouldn't have been an <laughs> Olympian. Um, but if they don't, if they let guys like me play, I think it would be much more entertaining. Not me now. Me when I was, like, 20. Because flag football, by the way, has grown huge in the United States. Over 7 million people in 2022 played flag football. Um, and it has now become a varsity sport in certain states for women to play flag football. I think it's a really neat opportunity for a lot of people. And it is something that countries all over the world can adopt because it is flag football. They don't mm -hmm. have to have all of the extra equipment. You don't have to. Have and you can have both men and women playing Oh, yeah. And I think it's really neat. I think I it's think a great idea. I think we need to do a mixed one, too. Mixed men's and women's team. I think that'd be cool. No. You don't? Okay. No, I don't. Hey, do you think we can get a barbecue in before the end of the year? No, probably not. Why not? Uh, it's a little cold here. You we might need those slippers. You think it would be unbearable outside? <laughs> I, I it might be. It might be unbearable. <laughs> and what would be a top five without Rob's unbearable jokes? The unbearable jokes. <laughs> No, but in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, a place that we usually go a couple of times a year. Sometimes as many as three times. There was a group of people having a barbecue. Now, we know people that go to Gatlinburg and visit the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. They go on trails. They are on the lookout for black bears. Mm -hmm. And in this particular situation, I don't think that they were quite expecting a black bear to maybe interrupt their barbecue, but it did. They were watching it from a distance, from a safe distance. Smart. 
as it lifted up the lid on the grill and it ate the 10 burgers that were on the I grill. I wonder if they were done. I don't know. I couldn't tell from the video. But then it knocked over a Diet Coke and it drank the Diet Coke too. I could probably eat 10 burgers. <laughs> Maybe five. Four for sure. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to ask your dad which... <laughs> Which, but yes, it, it wouldn't be a top five. It would be unbearable to have oh, a top five that is such without an original a joke. story. <laughs> but we, you know, in Gatlinburg, of course, they've got all these carvings of bears and stuff. But you know what? Our friends in Australia, they said, no, 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 no. Forget that. We're going to have a 30 foot chrome gnome. Say chrome gnome five times fast. I bet you can't. Uh, chrome gnome, 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 gnome. Anyway, this, this chrome gnome, who is 30 feet tall, by the way, has been relocated. He is now a part of the folklore of Australia, and he's been relocated to a great park, and people even decorate him. He had a football jersey on. Christmas time, he had some tinsel, and, uh. He's pretty well known. I would love to take a selfie with him because then it would reflect. I just think it would be awesome. <laughs> Do you think that they uh, decorate him with, you know, like a set of golf clubs? Maybe a hat. Maybe like one of those English, well, it wouldn't be English hat. The golfing hats, you've seen those? The, the yeah, hat. I, yeah, I have. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. They're, oh, they're, they're also good. called English driving hats too, but yes. <laughs> well, there is a man in Seattle. He's not out there trying to set any kind of world records for the heights of a chrome gnome, but he is out there intending to play over 500 golf courses in a year. He's obviously not married. No, he has already, we don't know that obviously at all. Not. Come on, really? <laughs> he has already passed 450, which is a new record since the last record was 449 set in 2009. And his goal really is, and by doing this, his goal really is to go and to raise money for charities. And one of the charities is a charity in Greater Seattle called the uh, First Tea. First Tea. It's a great organization. Of course, holiday season, if you're looking for a place, I'm very familiar with them. Um, they do a great job of uh, helping young people through the game of golf. And so look them up. Uh, online and they're they're fantastic people. I uh, had a shirt. That's about my claim to fame with those folks. But be on the lookout for him. You can check him out online and watch his his golf tour. Or maybe he's coming to a course near you. Hey, but that would be cool. We it, did it, that this weekend. Yeah, we did. Not we didn't play. We, we watched. watched. Yes, we watched, we watched our special reporter Sophia Stan <laughs> as she was in Dayton, Ohio, at the NCR. Uh, course, beautiful course, by the way. Wow, just a gorgeous place and a gorgeous course. And we had a great time down in Dayton. And our final story for today, of course, it's it's a gorgeous time of year. Or pumpkins, if you like that gorgeous. <laughs> that was pretty clever. Almost as good as unbearable. <laughs> it is pumpkin season, and as this week they're selling celebrating National Pumpkin Day, the United States does the most pumpkins in the world. They grow the most, a little over 1.5 billion, with a B, pounds. That is a lot of pumpkin. But you know, our friend Anthony, you know, <laughs> over there in Italy, he says, oh, no way, man, forget about it. You're not gonna have the biggest pumpkin. Biggest pumpkin was grown in Italy, 2,700 pounds, a little over 2,700 pounds, and just crazy. I, That's even bigger than the guy who carved the boat out of the pumpkin. Yes. That we talked about a couple weeks be, ago. On that'd the be show. more of an ocean liner. <laughs> Maybe. It'd be the love. It'd be the love boat. <laughs> the love boat. No, anyway. I don't know, but hey, that my friends is five things we think you should know. We are going to a video package, <laughs> and we will be back right after this. So tell us, what are we going to do? So I thought since we couldn't go apple picking, you know, because it rained, mm -hmm. I thought we will make a harvest Chex Mix. You know, oh, football. Very cool. Yes. Fall. By the way, one more shout out for the uh, Anthony Wayne Generals state champ for the boys. And of course, our very special 
guest uh, reporter, yeah. Sophia Stanton, came in in the top 20 individually. So congratulations to them. That's why we're sporting our Anthony Wayne golf gear today, and we matchy-matchy. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> hey, so let's get into this. We're going to make a, a fall harvest Chex Mix. Okay. Okay, so transparency. My mom made this, and she... So we're cooking with this, not, mm. eating, not eating. Oh. So, no, full transparency. My mom uh, made something like this, and she, when she went out of town, she left it some, and she said, help yourself. And we're like, oh, I've never had this before. We took almost all of it. You took almost all of it. And it was really good. So I, I got online. She was out of town. So I got online and started uh, searching for a recipe, and I found this. I'm assuming it's pretty similar to what she made. So we're going to try it out, and we're going to see how it works. All right, so we are going to start with some checks, rice checks. Right. I, um, I made about half recipe because there's only two of us. Only two of us. So there was really no reason to make a full recipe. So I eyeballed everything. I didn't really measure. It's not always a good thing, but there's about four cups. We're going to add that. So it's like a bowl of cereal for me in the morning. <laughs> yes. Your bowl of cereal. We're going to start maybe having you eat out of this bowl. Uh, there we go. I love that. It wouldn't feel like I'm constrained. <laughs> and we have some bugles and we have some pretzels. So Bugles are crunchy too. If you're on mic, don't ever eat a bugle. <laughs> Just warning you. We're going to dump all of that in there. Now, this is the interesting part because we are going to add a glaze or... You know, like when you make your regular Chex Mix, you know, you use Worcestershire sauce. I'm so glad you said Worcestershire sauce because <laughs> I have a hard time with Worcestershire sauce. Now I can't say it right after I goofed it. <laughs> That's how these things go. <laughs> so we are going to use, um, this, remember this is a half recipe, so we're using a stick of melted butter, a half a cup of brown sugar. Whoa! Ooh, that was fun. That was cool. I wonder how that looked on video. <laughs> Probably couldn't see it. Oh. If you couldn't see it, there wouldn't butter like flying went, into the air. It was <laughs> cool. And we're also going to use a tablespoon of vanilla. Now, you don't have to be exact. You just dump stuff together. If you like more of a glaze, add more stuff. Yeah. So the idea of the glaze, though, Rob, is you want to whisk it because you want to get that brown sugar dissolved in the okay. butter. Because so you melted the butter ahead of time, just so that yes. everybody knows. I melted the butter ahead of time. I also preheated our oven to 275. So it's kind of low. It is. Very interesting. And we got, let's see if you remember from last week, what is that called? Paper. Parchment paper. That's Parchment pretty close. close. So you can see the color of this. Mm, that it's looks good. I like can a caramelized that. color. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to just dump this on the top. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, this is good already. Now, there's some, this, the whisk didn't really get into the very bottom of it very well, so there's probably a little bit of brown sugar that's going to be left in there. Now, your family, every Christmas has Chex Mix. That's kind of a big deal. It is a very big deal. Your so, brother makes it. Yeah, he is like the king of Chex Mix. So he's in charge of making Chex Mix every year. I don't know if he makes like a double or a quadruple. Oh, it's got to be a quadruple because everybody gets some. <laughs> but he brings it and makes it for Lori's side of the family too. So yeah. everybody just, everybody loves Chex Mix. I mean, it's not Christmas without Chex Mix. First year, Doug gave me my own special bag. Do you remember that? <laughs> I do. I still have that, just so you know. And it was... Uh, this is a Ziploc bag with like two pieces. Yeah. In. But that was my welcome to the family, and I felt really good. But kind of Chex Mix, don't you think, is kind of like a, it's a part of fall. It's a part of football, you know, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's the way I look at it. Lisa. I remember having Chex Mix a lot like Super Bowl Sunday. Mm -hmm. We would have Chex Mix. Mom would make Chex Mix. So that was always fun. Um, of course, I love Chex Mix, so. Yum, that looks really good. Yeah, and you know what? I think I really want to try to scrape the rest of this out. Okay. Because why not? Yes, let's make sure we get it all. All that goodness. 
Yeah. Anytime there's brown sugar in anything, it's going to be good. I thought you were going to say anytime there's butter in anything, well, butter it's going to be good. Yeah, it's not dry butter too, but yeah. Oh, that looks really good. So Now, what kind of pretzels? They're square. Yeah. You've got different kinds of pretzels. Well, I, Are they really pretzels if they're like that? Yes. I just okay. thought maybe with all of the little, all the little squares in there, I thought maybe it would hold the brown That's sugar really cool. a little bit. So we'll see. We, we're not plugging that no. pretzel what, company, but use whatever, use whatever kind whatever you want. Kind so you like. when my mom made this, she had some Cheerios in there. She had some nuts in there, mm -hmm. some peanuts in there. Well, I don't have any Cheerios and I don't have any peanuts. You know, you could use honey nut Cheerios. You could. I just thought it was a good idea. You could use honey nut <laughs> Cheerios. Okay, so now I don't know how well this is mixed because I can't. They said use an extra large bowl, and so I thought this was an extra large bowl. So, so <clears throat> yes. So what Bring we're going to do is we're going to dump this. See how pretty that is? It does. It oh, looks really cool. It's going to get better, too. Oh, just pull that. Okay. Am I doing okay? You're doing great. This is about the extent of my cookie. <laughs> yes. You're joking. You, you, no. Just, no, they're not. I'm not joking. He is not joking. So, really, I probably should have this on two pans, but. And just think, this is just a half a. Yeah, this is a half of a recipe. Goodness. We're going to put this into a 275 degree oven, and we're going to bake it uh, for about 45 minutes. Going to stir it about every 15 minutes, and then when we come back, we'll see what we have. It'll be done, and I can eat some. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> Just like well, that. Just like this. Just like that. <laughs> Well, I... not just like that. Quite a long time. In fact, to be honest with you, I had pizza in between <laughs> these segments. So It took probably, I'm going to say about an hour and 15 minutes. It baked for about 45 minutes, but to get it cooled down sufficiently, it probably took about another half hour or so. So, yeah, we've done a lot of things. In fact, I should probably have shaved during this. <laughs> Goodness, that took a while. But uh, we're excited, man. This looks, it smells delicious. It really does. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a few little things to it. So we're going to have to try to somehow get this back into here. <laughs> and I Would don't you know, want to you do know, it like with um, the spoon, maybe. Maybe normally I, think I, I would, would. Normally I would just do something like this. You know. I think this has got bad <laughs> idea written all over it. And trust me, I'm a man that knows bad ideas. <laughs> well, usually I can just lift up the the parchment paper, or wax paper, or aluminum foil, and just dump whatever's on top of it. But doesn't that just smell awesome? It really does. Okay. okay. So we have this, and so you can see it. It pretty, pretty much takes up the whole thing. We're probably going to end up needing some tongs, you know, to toss it. Yes. And as we toss it, we'll see the mix go flying everywhere because the bowl isn't big enough. No, nope, it's not, but that's can okay. Can you imagine if we would have made a full batch? We'd have been having <laughs> checks mix all week. <laughs> so now we are going to take some Reese's pieces. Do you like Reese's pieces? I do. So we're going to take some Reese's pieces and we are going to put the Reese's pieces in here. One eh. at a time? Yeah, one at a time. It's going to take us forever. This is going to be a two hour special. So you can put however many in that you want to. All of those. All of them? Yeah. Why not? Let's so, live a little. For whatever reason, we have a really hard time finding Reese's Pieces, so we were I, just, excited. I just bought two of those little boxes. I think it was a total of maybe four ounces. I don't know for sure, but you know, the little boxes. Yep, that you can they get them make. at the grocery store. And we are also looking for the miniature uh, peanut butter cups, but couldn't find those. You know, the ones that already come unwrapped so that you don't have to unwrap them. So Yes. We, so Kristen had done wrap all of so these. So we didn't, I'm not putting a lot in there, but we are putting some peanut butter cups in there. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, if you don't like candy corn, don't put candy corn in. Put something else there. How could you not like candy corn? I don't know. 
You know, these little pumpkins are my favorite. You told me that, that yeah. when we first got married. I was like, ah, pumpkins? Yeah, they're really good, except for, you know, for me, I can't eat a lot of any of this stuff, and it tastes the best if you mix it with peanuts. And yeah. we don't we don't have any peanuts in here, so who knows? Probably get a sugar high from eating all of this stuff. Ta-da! We're done. <laughs> we are done. We are. I mean, in that, and that's cool that you can, like, get, and just go, yeah, kind of stir that in there a little bit. That looks uh -huh. good. You, you want to try stirring it? No. Because then it would be on the floor on the other side of the camera, and we don't want that. But this is amazing, and we hope that you are enjoying some of these segments we're doing from In the Kitchen with Kristen. <laughs> and voila, through the magic of TV, here it is in our uh, cool dish, container thing, whatever you want to call this. And this is so good. Okay, I'm going to find something really small. Because we don't want to hear me crunching like you did in some of the segments. <laughs> but, mmm, that was so good. <laughs> that was just awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying mm, it. It is. Are mm. you going to be eating now while I'm teaching? No. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> that was really good. I'm glad we used the extra glaze. Mm. <laughs> that was yummy. Speaking of extra, mm -hmm. sometimes um, God goes above and beyond. That's true. And we've been talking the last couple of weeks, and if you haven't been watching, I really encourage you to go watch the last, the first two episodes of this season on demand, mm -hmm. because we were talking about empty vessels and from empty to overflow. And one of the things that we know about God from studying his word is that God is a God of miracles and he's a God of abundance and he's a God of love and he's a God of grace. And one of the things that I really wanted to talk about today really goes back to a story that we all know so well. It's a story that you learned when you were a little child growing up or if you started in church later in life, I'm sure that you've heard the story about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Yep. So just to kind of recap, in case you're not familiar with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, they would not bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's image. Yep. And Nebuchadnezzar said that, hey, anybody who doesn't bow at the time that the musicians start to play, there's going to be repercussions. And he called them four. And these were not just any normal people in the Bible. These were people that he considered part of his leadership, so to speak. Inner circle. Right. Yeah. And so he called them in. And one of the things that they told Nebuchadnezzar, and he said, um, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. And so what I want to talk about today is out of the fire. So sometimes in life we go through things and it feels like you are in the middle of the fire. And it just feels like God has left you there and there is no place for you to go. But one of the things that we see here is these three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that no matter what the circumstances were that they were going through, and these are people going through real difficult things, real, really difficult things. Yep, the fiery furnace thing, that would make it real <laughs> difficult. You know, sometimes we consider our trials to be difficult, mm -hmm. but in comparison, we really shouldn't be complaining about the things that we go through. That's true. But in their particular situation, Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't bow, you're going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And they said, but that's okay, because the God who we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace and... He will deliver us out of your hand. So he knew, they knew that no matter if 
God did not deliver them from the fiery furnace, that they would still be delivered from the decree and from the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. They knew what we sometimes have to remember is greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And if God be for us, who can stand against us? Who can be against us? And we sometimes forget that when we're in the middle of these circumstances and we have to remember that the same God who allows us to be in the fire and you have to remember that where you are God knows exactly where that is and you are there because he allowed you to go into the fire. It doesn't mean that you're there and he has forgotten you, but God knows that you're there and he will deliver you from those circumstances. He will bring you out. And it's kind of interesting though, if you think about it, God could have stopped it before they got thrown in. That's exactly where I was going with that. Wow. We did not, I did (laughs) not know that actually. No, but that's true. God could have just said, he could have changed the heart of Nebuchadnezzar. He could have said, okay, Nebuchadnezzar, if you do this, this is what's going to happen to you. He could have changed the heart of Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuchadnezzar could have said, wow, someone with that much conviction, I want to serve the God that you serve. But that didn't happen. But that still didn't stop them. And Nebuchadnezzar, he was angry. Visibly, the Bible says that he was full of fury and his countenance changed. And so then what happened is he commanded that they turn the furnace up seven times hotter. Mm -hmm seven times hotter than what it already was. Now, I can't imagine something that's hot being seven times hotter, but it was seven times hotter, and he commanded them to throw these three into the fire. And the really interesting thing about this was is the guy who threw them into the fire was killed instantly. Yeah. Because it was so hot. Yep. But then when Nebuchadnezzar went back later, he saw all of them, there not just three he saw four and he said in the fourth man looked like the son of god and they had no they had no no ropes or no chains or whatever it was that were binding them those were gone and i was thinking about the fact that those things that were cast into the fire with them god removed those things and he caused them to come out of the fire with the things that were holding them back. With those things, there were certain things that God caused to be burned off. And when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. Their clothes were not burned. Their hair wasn't burned. And if you've ever been around a campfire, oh, yeah. you can be by a campfire for just a short period of time, but you're going to smell like smoke. You're going home smelling like smoke. Yes. But in this particular situation, they didn't even smell like smoke because God not, did not deliver them from the fire, but he brought them through the fire and he used the fire to refine them. This was awesome. We had a, another great Bible study and another great time. And listen, Kristen and I want you to go out and live an abundant life.